Okay, so I just wanted to do a, a rant here, I suppose, about uh, locks and locks that have been used in the past, and locks that I feel are no longer the designs that I feel are no longer they're kind of outdated, I suppose, and not as fit for purpose as they used to be for a modern padlock. Okay, some of them are old, but I still think they're they are suitable for the needs that we have today. So let's start off with something basic, like this little warded lock. Warded locks, a design I don't think is secure anymore, because there are skeleton keys which you can buy, and you can just open every single one of these warded locks that are out there, they're not secure. Um, the only benefit that they do give is that they tend to operate in very harsh conditions because there's very few moving parts inside there. Other than that, not a very secure lock. It doesn't offer much in terms of security. Then we have lever locks. And... Um, they can vary in design. Of course, here's one old English style. This particular one I don't feel is um, up to the job anymore, and reasons why I'll get into that in a moment. First thing is lever locks use little levers that you have to lift up to a height similar to pins. The levers, they get lifted to the correct height, and the bolt, there's a bolt in there. And then when you turn the key, the key pulls the bolt across, lifts the levers at the same time to the right heights, and the bolt gets retracted or pulled out the way, and the shackle will open on a hinge. And that's what brings me to the next thing. I don't think it's fit for purpose in today's age because it only has to be cut on one side, and then the shackle will get opened. Also, it's got rivets, so that's another weakness. You can grind those off if you wanted. Um, yeah, don't think this is... As, even though it's less common, I think, to get picked open and stuff, I don't think it's fit for purpose anymore. Against bolt cutters and hacksaws and grinders. Not, not uh, very high security. There are locks, lever locks, that I believe are fit for purpose, but we'll get to that later. Let's just show you more designs that I think are outdated and no longer fit for purpose in today's environment. Uh, one like this, for example, this Ad Lake. Again, it's a lever lock, but it doesn't have any levers. I think, don't believe it has this very strong spring. And again, if you just cut the one side, then the thing opens. So I think that a modern lock should have require two cuts. And yeah, this spring holding this thing closed is not, in my opinion, up to the job of securing valuables anymore. Next I'll go into wafer locks you know this is a double-sided wafer and uh, the only thing these might be suitable for to, in today's day and age is not padlocks because they are too easily picked and jiggled open like this one this one again doesn't have the features I'd be looking for in a modern padlock and uh, the wafer core is not suitable anymore but uh, the only thing wafer locks might be useful for are on desk drawers as the base I suppose is a basic standard lock maybe even a post box but you get better cam locks that make these pretty much uh, I suppose in a way redundant you can get 
you can get tubular cores but I don't really trust those you can get disk detainer abloy cores and so on things that are more secure than wafer locks so again I think wafer locks are redundant a bit outdated and not shouldn't be used in my opinion Next, let's talk about combination locks. So here's a combination lock. Again, this one I do not think is fit for purpose. It's more a convenience thing. You just they work by putting your combination in. I think this one's one all ones. Or is it one, two, three, four? Yeah, it's one, two, three, four on this one. Uh, the problem with them is you don't need any tools, just a bit of skill and knowledge on how to decode them. And then anyone can change your combination, lock you out, or just get into your lock. And again, it's more combinations are more for convenience purposes. I don't really like convenience because I think it compromises security. But yeah, you have combination locks, padlocks. Here's two different types. You have the wheels like this, the wheels like this. And you also have the ones with the dials. I think the, if we are going to choose one that is more complex to decode, I'd say the one with the dial is probably harder because at least then you can't keep visual track, I suppose, of where you're at or what wheel is binding and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, these two designs I think are outdated for secure, securing anything valuable anyways. I know some people would disagree, but I don't believe... I think there are better options out there. And combination locks, I'm not the biggest fan of them. don't use them for securing anything. They're fun to play with. But that's about it. Um, and yeah, shackles being exposed like this is not something that I think is useful in most cases today. Not secure, shall I say. I don't believe they're secure. Um, yeah, you also get the combination locks with the push buttons, but again, still not secure. The ones that you get, I don't think they're fit for purpose anymore. Um, but again, my opinion. Uh, you have disc detainer locks, locks that have little discs that are rotated to different angles with the key, like this cheap Chinese one. The discs are rotated to the right, correct angle, and then the little, the little bar that then drops into the gates. Some of these have false gates. And here's a, an abloy. Here's a cheap one. So this abloy has that classic, I think, keyway. Uh, I don't have any tools to pick it. You'd have to, if anyone wanted to pick it, they would have to have a special tool made. But with a cheaper one, you can buy the tool on for very cheap online, and you can learn to pick these. I wouldn't trust them, because these cores can be pulled out and exploited. This one, it's actually screwed in there and then tightened with a little, a little um, screw held in place there with the screw. And that screw is guarded by the shackle, as you can see. The shackle goes all the way down there. And Oh, it's a hardened shackle, I think, and it uh, guards the um, guards that. I think you could still pull that out if you tried hard enough or whatever. But unlike this one, one's going to come out with more ease. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't, even though this is what it is, I wouldn't use this one because again, it's got the exposed shackle and that design. I don't think. Unless it's very, very thick. The shackles are very, very thick. Like maybe this one. Maybe. 
minimum of 16 millimeters. Uh, I'd still, I still would say that modern padlocks with this kind of design should have a shroud. Cause they will face grinders. Never mind bolt cutters, and bolt cutters will get through these exposed shackles. And then you've got your hacksaw blades, and a grinder, of course, will get through this very quickly. You've also got twist attacks and so on that will exploit the thicknesses of the lock body, maybe even shear the shackle. So that's a disc detainer lock. We have push key, push key locks, two different varieties. So you have the pagoda style, you have the round, the round version which looks like that. Again, they can be picked fairly easily if you know how. So how these work is you push the little discs that are inside there, push them down. To the right heights. There's about three of them in there. Push them to the right heights and it allows you to turn the core and open the lock. Um, basically how it works. You can see the key here. It has little steps. There's one there, one there, one there and those steps push the three discs down to the right heights and you can then open it. Again, I don't think it's uh, terribly fit for purpose anymore because the core, I think that the design is a bit too fragile, especially when it comes to picking, they're quite fragile. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't personally use this kind of core on the lock unless it had been maybe made of better materials. Uh, these, however, are made of zinc and that can be melted as well, so and broken with hammers and it's pretty fragile material. I wouldn't use this as for a security application, at least by itself. I wouldn't trust it. Pagoda locks. And we have, I suppose, lighter locks. So this one here is a can be tricky to pick open. It has two little sidebars and little sliders you can see there on either side. And you have to push those sliders to the right angle. One these ones go to the left, these ones go to the right. You have to push them to the right uh, depth and then it allows the sidebars to I think either be fall into place or get pushed out of into their, you know gates there and allows the core to turn but yeah sliders just like I say they slide across when you put the key in and align with their true gates a little bit less common to pick open but still not the hardest thing I suppose mm. and let's just move on to pin tumblers I suppose I'll just take this baton or no We'll take a little, little, little brinks here. So inside the keyway, you can see inside that keyway is uh, that first pin. And I can move that pin if I take a pick here. Move that pin. That's where the first pin stack is. You can see I'm pushing it up. And where this little circle is here, that's the core there, and that little, where that line is, is where the shear line is. So you're just pushing the pins up, there's a number, a number of pins in there. You're just pushing each pin stack to the right height, so that the key pin doesn't go high, you know, past this shear line. That's the key pin there that I'm touching. There's another pin above it. It's driver pin and spring. Again, you're pushing it to the shear line. And when you push all the pins to the shear line, then the core will turn and the lock opens. And you get security pins that make picking these harder. 
but it's a design now that I am thinking is a bit outdated. I know it's got its benefits and stuff, but I think because of all the different tools and attacks you can get these open with sometimes, raking, overlifting, rocking, blah blah blah, this goes on. A standard pin tumbler is now outdated. Again, that's my opinion. And I don't think it's secure as it would have been. Here, then you have another variant of a pin tumbler. You can see all the pins. They are, instead of being in a straight line, they're in a circle. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This design, again, I think is outdated now because of impressioning tools and different tensioners. At one stage, someone thought that this was unpickable and blah blah blah, but it still got picked in the end. And yeah, this is a design that I wouldn't trust, but it's still cool to have anyways in your, in your collection and stuff. And if I look at the lock body on this particular padlock, we don't have a shroud. Again, I think that's a design that's outdated. But yeah, this lock can be impressioned open and picked open. And then another design would be a dimple, dimple lock, where it has pins. On the sides, uh, here's another dimple lock here, or uh, yeah, it's a, sort of a dimple lock. You can see, it's got uh, little pins. One, one pin stack there, one pin stack there, one pin stack there, and there's another pin stack I think at the top there. But uh, anyway, this lock is marketed as unpickable, but we can still pick it with a toothpick. Done a video on that before. Again. Uh, it's obscure, but it's not secure. It's a pin tumbler variant. And what else is there that I can discuss here for a moment? Pin tumblers. Yeah, you, the more pins in the lock, I suppose, the more delay it gives. You can have up to seven pins, maybe more. Um, covered enough, I think, on this. Of course you do have another design of a pin tumbler and it's a cross lock, they're just pins that are there, there, there and there, pins on each side. Normally these are not the hardest things to pick and again we have a, a pick that will open them rapidly called a cross lock pick, it just rakes all the pins simultaneously. Okay. So I've covered a bunch of locks that are out there, and at the moment, in terms of picking, I think the most secure against picking at this time anyways, would be disc detainers, because few people pick these things reliably, and that's if they even pick the lock at all which is already unlikely. Also, they're quite reliable. Now, I've already said that this, just take this little chub padlock here, I've said that this design, a four padlock, in my opinion anyway, is outdated. Because we have, of course, attacks where you can, do where you twist this lock, and it snaps the shackle or snaps the lock body to torque. That will compromise this design. You have, of course, bolt cutters, which will cut these. You have grinders, again, that will get through these. You have hacksaws, a sharp enough blade and stuff, you can still get through these. Drills. You have drill. Drills, some people will try and drill your lock out. So, Again, not exactly the most secure thing. And let's just have a look at something here on this 
There's a little, very little material over here on each side that's actually holding this lock together so they could just take a grinder and cut across here but uh, who knows maybe at the top there it would cause more problems I don't know I suppose if they would they could always grind the body you know over here and I have an example of when that happens somebody just attacked the lock body although I don't think it's the most you know the best job but uh, yeah somewhere you can see they just grind through the lock body this particular design however I do think is even though this one was it still got they still got through it as you can see um, it still fits this design is still fit for purpose more so than this I wouldn't I wouldn't rely on on a hardened shackle or whatever to keep most modern destructive tools from getting into your lock so exposed shackles you get them on pin tumblers you get them on lever locks you get them on wafer pad locks combination locks and so on so I don't think that this design is secure. You do get lever locks with shrouds and that's what I think if you're going to go for lever locks you need to get a lever lock that has protected shackles, shrouds because you need as much material for the person with their grinder to get through and buy you as much time as you can get out of it. That's why you want shroud a shackle on its own is not fit for purpose. Okay, and we have this one. See, it's a lever lock. And it still has its little hinge there, which I think is a weakness to a great degree, but um, I'd say if someone only has to cut through one half of this and then it'll obviously open up, but that's that. At least it's got a shroud, so it will buy you some time. Unlike this one. Not much time, a lot of time, or more time anyway. So if you're going to use a lever lock, make sure you use one that has a shroud. And again, this little mailbox padlock has a shroud. It's not the thickest thing ever, but still something, I suppose. And Okay, so I don't think that unshrouded padlocks are fit for purpose in my opinion anymore. I will however make one exception, and that is if the padlock has some sort of covering that blocks access for grinder and so on, you know, to the shackle, like on a um, on a container or something maybe. As long as it's the sh shackle is hidden and it's hard to access with grinders and bolt cutters and stuff, maybe in that case it's up to you. I wouldn't, still wouldn't use it, but I'm just trying to say as long as the shackle is guarded, then maybe you could you, you could do that. But I don't think it would offer you that much delay, even though it has a guard over it. And um, okay, so another design that I think is more is still relevant. In comparison is this American for example it has the, sh the high guard to protect the shackle and give you more delay if you go for one of these they're still gonna offer you more security than a standard design I suppose and then of course we have another design that I like that I believe is still secure for today's purposes, this is just a mono block padlock chub one, of course. Um, the weak points, I still would say, on this particular one, are is this side here. I don't know if it's got any anti saw um, protection in there, but you know this one is the basic, I suppose. I'd rather use this over this. 
even on a lower security application. And yeah, this could for all we know be cut with a hacksaw through this part here. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of that particular monoblock design. I would pref prefer myself to have a design where let's just take this one for example. Only as an example where it's more balanced, we have thicker uh, walls on either side. Um, or we'll just take a decent one here. See this Vero evenly distributed on either sides and it's hardened, so that's a serious luck there. This one not high security because it doesn't have a drill plate. This one has a drill plate, you can see that spins if you try and drill it. Also if you try to pull that out it's going to shear. This one you can't really pull out because it's, you know, it's flat but still. That I think is a design that is still fit for purpose. The core however I think is outdated. Uh, again, because it's just as it doesn't have any um, sliders or anything other than just security pins. I think a modern high security lock, anyway, should have more than elements to it, not just a pin stack, maybe sidebars, at least one sidebar. Uh, so, yeah, this is, is what I'd consider a standard lock fit for purpose today. And yeah, I don't know how easy this would be to twist, unlike this. Uh, here's another lock that I think is an alternative to that, but pick resistance not very good. I think they should have that ABIS, that is an ABIS lock with a disc detainer core. That would be the best version of this I think that you can get. Um, and yeah weaknesses of these though are that because some of them are made of most of them I think are made of stainless steel you can cut through the hollow this part here is a part here that's hollow and you can cut through it with a hacksaw grinder and all that rather quickly and most of these don't have drill protection on the core like this Brinks as well brass core pretty straightforward I think to, for them to drill it out so it's a standard lock it's not something I would recommend anyone use in a high security situation it's still better than the old design like this because as well it's not one of those locks you can twist, use the twist attack on successfully. Um, what else is there? So that's a design anyway I would recommend for a standard lock or a high security lock, something again with a shroud that's got more uh, elements inside of its core, so sliders and pins or disc, a disc detainer core. I know that Abloy make a padlock with like this with a shroud so I'd rather use that one and uh, there's they had the Protec 2 that was a core that couldn't be picked for a while but Huxley Pig managed to make a uh, tool to pick them but again it's not something that I think at the moment criminals are going to be trying to do because they have to take the time to get the skill to pick them open and it's something I would say very unlikely that a criminal would go ahead and try and learn to pick a lock especially an Abloy Protect 2 which takes a lot of time to learn and you have to have the special tools and so on to pick them and then finally, another design, I think, that'll wrap it up. A uh, design that I think is still relevant. And one of the best designs for 
modern padlocks are these puck locks and this chub um, warrior whatever it is where it has or Hercules I don't know what it's called again I forgot but it's has the shackle hidden in the, and that shackle is pretty thick as well so the only thing really that's gonna have a good chance maybe of getting through these are grinders because this lock again it has drill protection a lot of drill protection although the core is a bit dated I, and I think should have more than just pins you do get the variant that has the AVA core which is much harder to pick but as a pin tumbler I think it should have more elements to it so that you cover that this one's a cheaper version it's just a puck lock but it doesn't have any drill protection it makes it kind of vulnerable to drilling but again for cutting with bolt cutters you're not going to cut it with the bolt cutters um, if you had a sleeve on the outside of this you could make it harder for someone to to um, try and twist it off but this one doesn't have a sleeve I'd have a sleeve on there that protects it from that um, yeah, I think the weakness of most of these cheaper ones are picking maybe bumping and uh, drilling but still offers more resistance than something like this and yeah I see these kind of locks used on vans for van security however I think that it's on the lower end of security for securing a van there are such things in the middle um, called slam locks and they're like a rim cylinder that you know is attached exteriorly as a deterrent from opportunistic thieves but to my surprise they those locks now have become becoming obsolete again and so the locksmiths are installing more covert locks as I found out where they use electronic bolts on the inside of the door that cannot be seen so the opportunistic thief wouldn't know if it has those on them as well so yeah this lock in particular gets uh, it gets attached to the door on like a hasp which has three bolts on each part of the hasp and then that goes on top of it but Sometimes the criminals just seem to rip the bolts off and shear them off and ignore the lock, but you know, that is what it is. A lock is just a deterrent and we have to choose a lock like this, like this. The lever lock, something like this, or again, like that hidden shackle lock, like the chub. If we want something that's more going to defend our property from a lot of attacks, because if that's the reality, is you have a lot of attacks, and this design is outdated, in my opinion not fit for purpose anymore if there are better options now a grinder is going to get through all of these but at least it'll protect you from bolt cutters and hacksaws and drills and so on um, depending on the you know the features it has but yeah the main thing is to keep a padlock get a padlock that has a shackle that is guarded um, yeah, if you have any questions that you want to ask me about about it, then ask away. But I have had my, I've said my two cents on 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 this. I've had my two cents. Let's see what I have to say. And I think that that monoblock design is less common in the states. However, they do have a 
company that makes them and that is Packlock and Packlock have cores that um, are harder to pick they also have the the new design like this yeah, this is a little bit higher up here so they fixed that old design but yeah it's got they've take they've got like uh, hardened rods or whatever that go inside here to protect this part from being cut and this one will be fairly light because they use aluminium to uh, make their padlocks lighter this one's just the one I got from the lock lab but uh, yeah you can get you can get you can either order one from abroad you know a, um, a Vero or a uh, CISA or something or you can support your local lock manufacturers like Pacific Lock and get one of their products but uh, yeah again be careful what you buy and use the padlock that you the best padlock you can get and make sure it's fit for purpose so that's my rant on that <laughs>